So the students had multiple opportunities for self-paced quizzing, more online assessment opportunities, and we actually achieve more lab time with this. And so we could have more in, in haste, enhanced case scenarios. So instead of just saying, oh, here's all the therapeutic exercise you can do shoulder joint. We, we took it into a case scenario of a uh, rotator cuff uh, surgical protocol. We kind of advanced the different therapeutic interventions related to timeframes of when you would see that patient. So from the protected uh, timeframe, to the controlled motion and then to the return of function. And we kind of had several days of clinical session to where the students could progress that one paper patient um, throughout their, their whole series of, of treatment. Um, so what we decided to go with uh, was articulate storyline 360. Um, so this is how, um, how it looks when the students in their uh, LMS or learning management system um, we broke it into eight different modules. We did shoulder, elbow, wrist, hip, knee, ankle, and then a cervical spine, lumbar spine. And then what we did is we guided them on the same pathway through each of the modules. Uh, we did a structure and function review. So it's a eight to 10 minute video that we use with Dr. Seacrest uh, eOrthopod. Um, and then we did about 30 to 40 hotspots, up to 70 hotspots per video um, through Storyline. Um, so they can have that review and get assessed, self-assessed through that. Um, then we go into our objective measures. So that's a little bit more of the blended content and, and hitting some lab elements to where we use physio use, goniometric measurements, manual muscle testing, special tests. Um, and then I think uh, I think it was Renee kind of had the question of like not overwhelming the uh, PTA student with a PT content. We utilize physio use uh, diagnosis, um, their uh, CPR uh, clinical pattern recognition um, segment, and I'll show that a little bit uh, later. And, and kind of selectively guiding the students what they need to see. And then as Jorge said, what they need to be assessed on for the resources that we provided them with. Um, and then we had the case studies, which we have in lab and surgical protocols, which we do as lab experiences. And then we did a pre-quiz through Articulate because we could do more video or um, pictorial quizzes um, that were easier to create than within our LMS. We use Blackboard. Um, one thing to note if you're looking at storyline articulate, um, it works great as far as being able to maybe give a test result of a score to your uh, grade center, but it's not good at splicing out um, correct and incorrect answers between each question. Um, so we really kind of use articulate as a self-guided learning experience. Um, you can check to see if the students hit all the slides. So that is nice. You can, you can see if they've completed the module. I'm gonna exit out here. It may uh, drop our video recording. Um, just to get out of the PowerPoint. Um, let's see if I can exit this way without hitting escape. Yeah, there we go. Okay, the recording should still be on. So now what I'm gonna pull up, does anybody have any questions at this point? Yeah, Sam, Marcy actually just mentioned a question about how do you schedule labs with the online content to ensure that lecture information is reviewed by students prior to attending the lab? Some programs require a lab ticket, some online assignment or quiz completed prior to the lab session. Any thoughts? Yeah, those, yeah, those are great. Um, so we were in a beta testing state at this point. We stayed about one week ahead of the students of creating content before it was delivered. Um, so really capturing that. They, they really watched the structure and function videos probably first. Um, the objective measurements uh, we kind of did in lab as their first pass. So it's kind of more blended rather than flipped classroom. And then they go home and take the quizzes that evening after lab. Um, and, and so, um, you know, you, you could have one, one way um, you could actually, when we have our quizzes that I'll show, you could actually have a printout that they've taken it and it shows their grades. So the student could self print when they took that quiz. So they could take it on the front end. Um, so that's something that could be created um, within um, Articulate to just print out their results score, um, kind of bringing that badge or the ticket to the lab. And I would just add in that we have, um, again, I think it was Renee that brought up, man, our students really don't know how to study. And I think it's a new, unique and new environment where they have to learn how to build content in their brain instead of shove in and then dump out after each semester. 
And so I think one of the things that I was, that we've done is we are very explicit at the beginning of the program to line out what is the expectation of how this pro this class is going to be successful. They know that the online content that they're watching over the weekend is going to shape and create a foundation for the interactions that are going to happen on Tuesday when I talk to them about different different conditions with shoulder pain, uh, you know, frozen shoulder and and shoulder impingement or subacromial pain syndrome. So. There is a consistency that happens every week and it happens the exact same way week by week. And I laid that out. I don't leave that to chance. So they know that if they don't watch that content, it will be hard for them and less beneficial for them on Tuesday when we're interacting. And that will add on like it, the max, it maximizes the benefit because when Thursday comes, all of that is all linked. And so you begin to create a culture that they can rely on. And I think that is the value of the consistency of the instructor in how they scaffold and structure the class and then create the, the understanding of how am I gonna get through all of this and in what order should I do this? It should be explicitly, uh, it, it should be very explicit to the students at the very beginning so that they are not eventually trying to figure out how to manage this in whatever way they thought that would work for them. And from there, they can self-modify, I think, a little bit. I don't know if that helps, Renee, or you have any thoughts related to that. No, no, that, that, that's helpful. And um, yeah, I have, I mean, I think I, I, I'm, a, I'm already, I'm a believer in that. And I think that structured approach is really good. I think one of the things I, I need to do personally is maybe, I think we talked about too many resources at the beginning, right? To organize into my own, my what what we'll use, and then really be able to um, organize that in such a way that we do have the same, a very consistent pattern. I think yes, this the more the students understand the expectations, and the more they're consistent week to week, the the better the better result we'll get. So yeah, I appreciate that. Thanks yeah. very much. And yeah. and to piggyback on Jorge's point. I think uh, as faculty, we often feel the burden to reuse resources that we've always used, which means that as new resources, new resources come out, we kind of layer them on. And before you know it, they've got three textbooks, a special test textbook, an orthopedic, you know, pathology text. And you've, before you know it, you've got so many things. And, and, and for us, we just kind of deliver it. But for them, they have now so many things to get through. It really works against their learning. So being able to say, I'm the instructor. I know what I need you to learn. And I will only choose resources that will help me achieve that goal. Everything else is secondary. And I promise you that that little bit of freedom, you can still get very good outcomes. I mean, we have, we have almost a 97, 96% first time pass rate. And we have focused on that. Like we, as clinical specialists, we all know what needs to be taught. But then it was so easy for me to have like a couple of Therex texts, a couple of ortho texts. And then we had this massive pathophys book that wasn't well connected to the content. And, you know, it really undermines the student's trust in what resources are you really going to use? Hi, Kelly. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. We'll have the recording for you afterwards. Okay, Sam, go for it. Okay. Um, one thing to note, um, all of this is on our uh, South Arc LMS, uh, which is Blackboard. And at the end, I'm going to give you actually links to it. This is open sourced, uh, an open class. So anyone can sign in. Um, they can utilize it. If you want to let your students run through and practice it, um, there's a lot of hyperlinks to PhysioU. So Kind of working both programs together, uh, this course um, and and uh, PhysioU they integrate nicely together. Um, if if you wanted to make more specific changes, you, you know we could talk about you know sharing the actual data of, of articulate those files. If you wanted to adopt articulate, you could create some of your own content. But everything we have, it's it's set up as an open course that anyone can come in and play with, uh, give comments, feedback about. 
so just just be aware of that. If there's anything you're interested in or I might not cover, um, I, you know, as we kind of do a question and answer at the end, I can kind of show you how to, to get on on onto this class. And Sam, do you mind closing out that panel so that we can yeah. see your screen better? Thanks. There we go. Okay, so this we're actually live in our course of applied physical therapy. Um, so structure and function, it's basically just a quick video. I'm not going to run through it, but it's basically um, a uh, video of anatomy. And then we have quizzes set up. And you can just go through the quizzes. So um, that's something you play around and just want to let you know, because uh, you have more that are that are talking about the anatomy um, teaching it. But this is where we kind of get into the meat and potatoes of the physio U. Um, starting with objective measures. So we go in, um, we go into goniometric measurements. And so we have a sign in page, or you can just go here, it'll directly take you to Physio U. Um, and it'll, it'll key you to sign in. So we'll go in, we're right into the range of motion manual muscle testing within Physio U for the knee. And we're going to just watch knee extension real quick. For this measurement, we're going to use the lateral trochanter at the hip the lateral epicondyle at the knee, and the lateral malleolus at the ankle. We are looking for extension. If the patient cannot get to full extension and has a degree of knee flexion contracture, we would take our measurement here in this position, aligning our goniometer, easy overpressure. Our students really like this because one, they get a review of the anatomical landmarks, so the stationary axis movement arms, they get a very clear cutaway view of the goniometer. So a lot of times when I'm demonstrating, I'm kind of doing it more as the clinician, so they might not have as good of a view. And this is displayed on our projector, so everybody gets a good view of it. And then they can have it on their own uh, devices as well. Uh, so within, that's the video aspect, but then the content, um, it's going over the landmarks, it's going over the normal ranges and the different resources uh, publishing those ranges. Um, so it's a great resource for the students. Um, and then what I'll, all I have to do is to click out and I'm back in. Uh, that was just a new window that opens up. So once the students go through the goniometric measurements, we quiz them. So we've got a quiz. Uh, this is set up as basically a drag and drop quiz. And so they can just kind of learn if they put something in the wrong place, it snaps back. And it's rather being soft uh, with hamstring or could be firm um, if, if more of a joint capsule uh, ligament structure. So we go through the quiz, submit the quiz. You know, if, if the student really knows your goniometry, they want to navigate out, they can always go back to um, this menu here. This is a hideable menu, so it always allows them to get out of something that they might not really need. So that shows the goniometric measurements. When we go into manual muscle testing, uh, the, the, the key here is uh, we've been using the uh, Daniels and Worthingham's uh, muscle testing. So having it out on our lab table, um, your students trying to flip to what I'm talking to, that takes more time. So that putting them kind of in that immediate results, immediate things we want. Um, I can have this on the screen within our lab. We've got pictures from the text. If we need to review origin, insertion, nerve intervention, spinal level, we've got just one area. We don't bombard them with all the information. It's just one at a time. So these are all just different layers within the slide that have different triggers. Learning uh, what causes knee flexion, we really want to know on a first pass what the prime movers are. But when we get into more of gait analysis, you know, you can't have a pre-swing um, with any of, any of these muscles that may also cause hip extension because um, you're, you're trying to get knee flexion, hip flexion, so you get some of the other uh, muscles firing, uh, like satoris or gracilis, that also cause knee flexion without uh, causing hip extension. So that's that's kind of a second pass of information. And then when we want to view the uh, physio U video, we've got a created hyperlink right in here within our slot showing uh, zero trace or gravity minimize uh, testings, alternative testings, and then going into the videos of uh, grades three through five and then watching the video and then we also it's there's also a listing of the grades the plus and minuses set up uh, within their their text material um, and then also again with muscle origin insertion innervation 
um, on, on here as well. So it kind of gives a couple of passes for the students to get access to that information. So we do this for each of the muscles. And then after we've done that, we can return back to our module and then take a, take a quiz. So we're gonna take a quiz. So this is set up um, using the same picture. So, you know, uh, like Jorge said, we don't wanna bombard them having to read a lot of stuff. They say, oh, that's knee flexion. Um, and we go mat automatically a quiz. So we're gonna look at knee flexion, submit. All right, one of two slides. Now we're gonna go, okay, knee extension. We've got rectus femoris. Uh, we're gonna get these, I'm gonna submit. I didn't quite get it. I'm gonna try again. I'm gonna submit, even if I don't get it right, I immediately get an answer. What we did is we took a screenshot for incorrect slides and, and pasted in what the correct answers are and then kind of highlighted a text box so the student gets that. So instead of the student having to go to knee extension here and getting their answer of what the muscles are, and then the remainder of the muscles, they're automatically getting it through that quiz on that, uh, that incorrect slide. Uh, so we really like Articulate for the, the use of being able to do these quizzes. Um, and then we go into special testing. So within PhysioU, we can watch the special test. Uh, we can do all tests, or we can go into uh, more specific. So we can look just at ACL. We can watch each of the 30 second, one minute videos here. Um, so once the students have done that, then they'll go in. We, we have a special testing quiz by pathology. So same, uh, we, we kind of found drag and drop was a little cumbersome for the page, uh, for the students. So we went directly to um, a clickable. Um, we also eliminated this uh, submit button by putting in a space bar, space bar to advance the screens. That helped out a lot more. And then so let's say ACL, we're looking at it. Submit, I try again, maybe that wasn't right. I submit again. That incorrect slide, instead of just saying incorrect and give me all the slides I missed at the very end, we want that immediate knowledge of results for the students. So, ah, it's the anterior drawer pivot shift Lockman. Then they can continue through. Um, so that just kind of gives an example of how we utilize, you know, there's, there's several of these special tests. So it just gives a quick way for the students to learn and navigate that experience. Nice. Any questions on that from anyone so far? Um, I just had a, uh, a, a comment. I send you a text. And yeah. Go ahead and so just mention it. Yes. I think uh, you were on the, uh, oh gosh, I don't remember where you were. I think you were showing three pictures on the top and then. That's the, the MMT. If you could click okay. to the MMT component. Yes. see. And then there was an image from the textbooks as well as image of the PhysioU doing the knee flexion. You had three images at the top. I think that's what Jorge is talking about. Right. The, the image on the right side is depicting the nervous tissue. Yes. So Correct. the color immediately, as soon as I saw it, I thought about uh, arterial blood flow. Ah. So, Agreed. yes. Uh, I think it is, I think it's important to, to change the color. I think it gets, it makes it confusing. You know, if you are looking at this and then uh, in your memory, perhaps those colors get embedded and then. Uh, yeah, good point. Yeah. That's a great point. And that's that this slide is one that I'm uh, wanting to transition out. Uh, we also uh, are, are starting to put, uh, on honored uh, course adoption, uh, Netter's Atlas of Human Anatomy. Um, and they've got some great, uh, once you get the book, you can get access to their ebook. Um, it's got, you know, the yellow nerves highlighted. So I'm probably going to replace these with a Netter's picture to show because this really just shows kind of the spinal level and not as much of where it innervates the muscle. And I, I kind of rather have where that nerve is hitting the muscle uh, for the students. Um, and that's the, that's a great thing. We kind of on a design layout, um, we can, we've got a slide built where we can hit here. Um, and it will toggle between our, uh, muscle testing textbook and, uh, Netter's anatomy pictures. So there's some options and features, uh, features that we can do 
to add in either a new slide or just new layers to appear um, to give a little bit different information. That's that's a great point with the color uh, on it. Yeah, thanks. Other comments or questions? So, so, go ahead. Sam, you can actually keep moving and anybody who has questions, go ahead and just jump on in. Okay, so this is um, an area where, you know, as a PTA program, we don't have to get as deep into the examination evaluation process, but we still want the students to be aware of what the, the PTs are doing in the clinic and how they're getting at the diagnosis and what they've also ruled out. Um, so, so the PTAs are, they're being most effective with their, their clinical skills they have and, and treating directly what the problem is. So I'll kind of give an overview of how we navigate PhysioU to, to gate them through the content we want. And as Jorge said, what they're expected to know is going to be on their test or their assessment. Because um, there's so much information, um, we don't want them to get lost in the weeds. We want to get through that as quickly as possible without distraction. Um, so I'm going to show how we navigate through PhysioU. I'm going to show this, this is kind of the area we're in right now. It's a CPR ortho. We would go into knee, and then here's the diagnoses. So that's that's where we're at. Um, so go to all diagnoses uh, within this area. We kind of have some buttons to say, you know, click on diagnosis. That's going to prop you to the next thing. So we want the students to know the prevalence. We want them to view a video of the clinical findings. So this is, you know, what the patient's going to present with. Um, and there's some bullet points that we want the students to read. We want them to be aware of the, on the physical exam side, being a PTA program, we want them to see the key findings and movement faults. This associated impairments differential diagnosis might be a second pass of information or, or, or later, but the first pass and what we want to test them on are, are going to be these key findings and movement faults. So showing the key findings, here's the video for key findings, and then movement faults. Um, we want them to be, really be aware of the movement faults because, you know, a pathology arising in certain tissue might be produced from faulty movements either above or below uh, that area. So we want the students to be aware of that, that, that it might, you know, the, the pathology might be produced from some other area uh, causing excessive uh, forces to that, that area or compensation. Then we move into interventions. So, you know, you kind of notice here, there's no interventions in the intervention section. Uh, what we want the students to see are the clinical reasoning, which gives a great overview of all interventions. And then we want the patient to be able to, so they'll watch that video, which is a short synopsis of all interventions that will be used for treating this pathology. Then we go into patient education. Um, this is a great resource. It talks about the relevancy of the research substantiating what treatments are being performed. Um, there's some great uh, breakouts of printable pages. A lot of them are JOSPT uh, uh, links, and these can be printed out or even emailed to the patient directly. So that's nice, and it just adds some more information what's going on uh, for the patient. And then we want to show them uh, some of the modalities, just as good quick visual picture to look at that. So going through that, we can we can really do a test of each um, each joint that we're, we're going on our modules and kind of have a good diagnosis related um, test generated from that. Uh, so that's kind of how I would gate the students when they would go through PhysioU and saying, okay, you're going to be assessed on this content um, and then show them their practice test. Uh, one thing to note, um, so we've got resources here. Um, the how-to guide, we, can, we, we took screenshots to where it's easier to print uh, for the students to kind of navigate, they could print this out and then just instead of being in the module, they can just kind of go through PhysioU on their own uh, without having to jump in and out. And also with resources, we have, um, I'll go back to our main slide. This, each, each place you see this on each slide, this is um, all of our references for what's in this module. And if you go to our resources, we have our whole PTA uh, applied physical therapy uh, course bibliography that has a link of everything and hyperlinks to. So one of the things I would just add on, which 
every time I see it, Sam, I'm kind of like jaw dropped to the ground, not sure how I'm going to do that in my own class. So it will be good to show them a little glimpse of Articulate 360. It is not complicated, but it will take a little bit of uh, horsepower um, to pull it together. You can see how interactive these learning modules are. I mean, they put my recorded PowerPoints to shame. Um, but I was also going to say that I really like your how you fence how you're very explicit about what things they need to look at in physio U. because my own students will walk into physio U the environment and there's so much content that without a clear and deliberate direction and helping them see it so as an instructor i always every tuesday walk them through that pathway at least once so that it creates a comfort in the environment. It allows them to feel comfortable to open the doors that they see lining all of Physio U. Should I click here? Should I click there? Remember students in this day and age, for some reason, they feel very, um, they, they don't quite dare to open things and explore. They want to explicitly be told, spend time here and this is why and do it every week. And before you know it, you have a very finely tuned oiled machine of the students navigating through these resources and beginning to sort themselves out. And one of the beauties of the other thing that you mentioned is you can, in a very quick snapshot, link to their modalities class and say, hey, that's relevant for this condition. You don't have to watch all the videos, but you can connect it. Like I did yesterday, I was like, hey, we're talking about ankle sprains. Did you know that they talked about diathermy? Everybody's like, what? Diathermy? I'm like, yeah, the guidelines talked about diathermy. That's why it's relevant to pay attention in your modalities class. These are relevant modalities. Um, and so a lot of this kind of ability to connect to content that is actually in different parts of your course curriculum allows for the student to really build the bridges, build the connections. And I think that is inherently valuable because everything tends to be very siloed and, you know, different instructors, you're moving along the program and different instructors are teaching their silo. So in orthopedics, I can reach back to range of motion MMT. I can reach back to palpation in the range of motion MMT app. I can reach back, reach forward to um, it, or, or their X, let's say. And so they can begin to see all these pieces connected. And that is really where the magic happens. So go ahead, Sam. Go. Ahead. Okay. And so really, it's probably instead of opening up Articulate, because I think I am recording um, with a project for this, um, but we have our main guided slide. So you hit structure and function. Here's our video. It's an embedded YouTube video. So you can actually, the student can save it to their YouTube. They can actually su subscribe while they're within Articulate. Uh, same, uh, and, and here's the self-guided quizzes. Um, and then we go into our uh, special testing for goniometry, for manual muscle testing, the quiz thing. And then we go into our special testing uh, and the quizzing there. Um, and then through our this is through the diagnosis page. Um, on this module, I don't have the, the practice quiz. I started putting that just on our LMS, uh, uh, just still an articulate, but just to save uh, downloading and the amount of slides on some of these. Right, uh, and Sam, let me just jump in here and say that this Articulate 360 is like PowerPoint on steroids. So it allows you to create these branches. It allows, it has these pre-built quizzing modules that you go, oh, I just want to build this little quiz and I want it to come after they finish this set of slides. So there's quite a bit of power. This is what industry is using. Um, um, and so I think what it takes, th the nice thing, Sam and I were talking about this, is once you produce one for the shoulder, you can repurpose the project and now dump in new content for knee, for ankle foot. And so the flow of the course becomes quite consistent. Your quizzes are generally the same because you're kind of delivering the same kind of content. So after the first build, you can actually make it faster and faster. And in fact, we utilize, I utilize, Sam utilizes, we utilize grad assistants or even um, people that we hire from the outside. 
because as a faculty, we are the content experts. There are people who can build this for you. I mean, you you have them watch a two hour a two hour tutorial. They can build this, and then once they build the first one, boom, you can start generating generating more and more. So it, it it is a little bit daunting initially. I kind of like blindly led my way through building my first one, but once I began to realize that this was within reach, it changed my view of what online learning could be like. So, and no, I don't, I don't think, I think, look, we have, we've used recorded PowerPoints for the last four years. So your first pass does not have to hit the stars, right? I think in the next iteration, you can then make sure you have a little bit of backup. You have some student helpers that, I mean, this is not proprietary material. This is not like sensitive material. A lot of the learning quizzes are just there for the student to have the interactions. So it's not really sensitive. So really to be able to use a past student who knows how you do deliver the curriculum or to utilize a PT who is kind of techie and wants a little bit of side work, I think that's money well spent out of your budget. Because it's overwhelming to do it on your own while trying to manage your courses and trying to um, you know, manage all the other administrative things you guys have to do. And Jorge mentions here that he uses Panopto to produce videos and embedded quizzes after a set of slides. That's awesome. Usually one quiz in the middle and a quiz at the end. That's, that's perfect. Awesome. Yeah, they did mention there is a fine balance between information delivery and then the quiz or the interaction and then information delivery and then the quiz. So that's great. All right, Sam. Okay. Um, I'll uh, kind of finish uh, the last couple of slides. And then if, if anybody has more specific uh, questions about articulating storyline at the end, I'll, I'll, I'm more than glad to hang around a little bit afterwards and I can kind of run through how we did some of the process and development within articulate. Um, I, when I saw how articulate was being used um, one thing, if you're with a university um, and they have a distance learning team. A lot of times they'll take your PowerPoints and your, your tests and quizzes and they'll generate this for you. Um, mm. and so for uh, a lot of larger universities, they've got teams that are, that do this for online or blended classrooms. No such luck, Renee. <laughs> and Marcy, actually, yeah. actually, I'm, I'm sitting here with the person I work with as my uh, instructional designer, and I'm just saying, yep, that sounds like a, a job for you too. So here we are. <laughs> yeah, we. Are, I actually do. I mean, I have access to people. What I don't have access to probably is the um, uh, the Articulate 360, and we just looked it up. And how did you get funding for that? Is that does your school buy that, or do you buy that? What What did we say it was? How many? So hundred? this this yeah. this is a. Uh, um, this is kind of how it came across. Um, we've, we've got funding for an extra help personnel. Uh, historically, that's been used within our lab for teaching um, and helping out with the lab. What we did is we, seeing this articulate process, um, my wife has been in the um, editing magazine production uh, business before. Somebody to work with uh, was in between jobs. Uh, utilized her knowing how Articulate looks very much like InDesign and a lot of page layout for production of uh, magazines, newspapers. Um, we grabbed her. We got her on an eight-week contract just for like, you know, 20 hours a week. Uh, we had her for eight weeks. We hired uh, the, the prior valedictorian, valedictorian from South Park, um, who's an accounting major. So we had an account, accounting major developer anatomy hotspots um, <laughs> and grab a lot of the content. Um, so Really, it was, is, as Mike said, kind of framing out what you want to do. Um, and a lot of the presenters with the grant that we received were figure out how to split your class into eight modules, figure out what your competencies are and how to reverse design that content. Um, and and it, for me, being a new faculty with, you know, coming from the clinic, coming into education, um, not having a lot of the educational background. That's why for PTA program directors, captives want you to have the non-credit hours of education. Um, it really forced me taking a PowerPoint that had like 77 slides and multiple hyperlinks and the students would just print it out and they'd never go to the hyperlinks. This kind of helped me to say what's important for the student, what and how to navigate it to where each each time they come into a course module, it looks exactly the same. 
Um, and, and that was, that was a big, you know, it, and it, that was kind of the first week of working with her, her layout designer, Brooke, um, that she kind of said, Oh, this is what's going to flow. What's visual, what's flowable, what's going to keep the student in the right track. Um, so that, that was great, um, on that front, spending a little bit more extra time on that. Um, and so just, you know, this, like I said, is an open course open to the public. So these next couple of slides, this is our, uh, this is our webpage for, uh, South Exal community college. And I will send this out to the group, Sam. Okay. And I, I can, I've got a, I've got a shorter version too. That's just these slides. If they need that just, uh, without the video content in slides too. Yeah. You should that email. Um, so, uh, you can just sign in to our blackboard and then you can either type in PT as a username and then demo, uh, lowercase PTA also works. Um, so those are two sign-ins. So you can sign in there. The course is Applied Physical Therapy. And then when you click into the course, our content is on that left-hand side. And then we have all eight of our modules within here. That's great. Amazing. That's fantastic. 